So today in the shop, what we got is a Bobcat Toolcat with starting issues. Let's go ahead and see what it's doing and then we'll get into a conversation of why it's doing it or what we checked and try to diagnose what's going on with it. Go ahead and try to start it real quick. Okay, one more time. Okay, so we can see like the black smoke and stuff coming out of it. I originally talked to this customer on the phone. We were doing a video call, but his, his computer or whatever it was, um, or his phone had noise canceling, so I couldn't hear what the engine was doing. I could see the black smoke coming out of it. So we were kind of thinking that maybe it's a fuel issue, like it's trying to start, but it wasn't getting enough fuel. You know what I mean? But, yep. but you could see the black smoke, but I couldn't hear what it was doing. So we decided to go ahead and bring it down here to the shop. And on the trailer, I heard that noise right there that you just saw. It, it sounds like it's starting. It's got good black smoke, but it just, it stopped. So what happens is the engine will turn over. Once it sees RPM, the controller says, okay, I've got RPM, I'm gonna shut the starter off. So we can't hold the key in the start position and keep turning it over and over and over. The controller controls that and, and it shuts the starter off. And so I'm thinking when I heard it on the trailer that it's not a fuel issue. It sounds like it's something electrical. So the first thing I want to do is check our fuel shutoff solenoid. And how, how does this solenoid work, Mike? We got three wires on it. Yeah, see, that's what I was wondering. Because usually I, I've seen solenoids that are two wires. This one's got three. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we did a video on how these solenoids work. And uh, I'll leave a link for that video in the description. We go over how the three wire and the two wire work. Um, essentially, these coils have two circuits in it. You've got a pull and a hold circuit. And that's why we've got three wires. We've got a, the red wire is always the hold, the white wire is always the pull, and the black is the ground. Now, if you have a two wire solenoid, you've got a pull and a hold, and the body is the ground. So two wire, three wire, it doesn't matter. They still got two circuits inside. So the engine tries to start. That tells me that the pull circuit is working. So this solenoid is coming in and, and pulling, but then when you let off the ignition switch, or once the ECU sees RPM, the hold takes over. It should stay in and hold. You know, this when it, when it comes out, that's what shuts your engine down. So it tells me that the pool's working, but the hold was not. So what's the difference between the two circuits? I mean, what controls the pull and what controls the hold? And that's a good question. And, and that's probably something that, which we can talk about real quick. On this machine, the controller controls both the pull and the hold. Now, the pull is high current. There's a lot of amps that goes through that, so it's just a momentary, like a one second trigger to pull that in, and then the hold takes over. But on this machine with this controller, the controller, the panel, controls both those circuits. And that's not always the case. So some machines, the actual hold will be off the ignition or something like that, and just the pull will be off the controller or something. So there, there's a lot of different options as far as that goes. But on this particular machine, the, the controller controls both those. Um, the one, again, the high current, the pull has a fuse and a relay. Because of that high current, the hold comes straight from the panel on this machine. And that's going to be important in a minute. There's no interference from the panel all the way to this hold wire. So we know the pull works. We don't even have to check the fuse of the relay. It's all good. No, because, yeah, we checked that. So what I did is I unplugged the fuel shutoff solenoid under here and I put this one in. This one I know is good. And when we tried to start it, we could see it pull in, but then when they let off the ignition switch, it just popped out. So I was like, okay, well I know the solenoid's good because usually that's the first thing we would check, right? The fuel shutoff yep. solenoid. But we put in an own good one and we had the same results that we expected because you can't see this one. This one's actually internal in the engine. Um, so we know that there's something wrong with our hold circuit. Hold circuit. Thank you. And what we did to confirm that we had an issue with the hold circuit is pretty much we came right here. This is where it connects to the positive terminal on the battery. And we just back probed it. So let's take this and do the same thing. We back probed the hold circuit on the start solenoid or on the shutoff solenoid. And See if I can get smart. You're on your black wire. All yeah, right. So here, I'll have you do that. We're gonna put it here, so we're gonna give it power. We're gonna bypass the controller, essentially. Yep. 
so what I have to do is when he hits the key switch, I have to send power to this. I can't power it up first because then the ignition thinks something's wrong. So, so as soon as he starts to turn it over, I'm gonna hook this to power and we're gonna send straight 12 volts to the hold circuit. Okay, go ahead and try to start it. So now we can see the engine's running, that pull circuit's holding because we sent 12 volts to it. So we know our solenoid is good. Okay, we can cut it off. So I did shut it off oh, because right. yeah. we have constant power here. The key's not gonna work. So we do have to shut it down. Yeah, that's how you have to <laughs> shut it down right there. I'm like, all right, shut it down, Mike. <laughs> so, so that's what happens yeah, when we bypass the solenoid. So what does that tell us? That tell us that it's working whatever is telling it to um to hold is not working right. so it could be so the wire so in between good. or it could be the controller okay. itself so first thing we would do is if we see any clues that's that's what we want to kind of follow so let's take a look back in here here's what we found when the machine came to us this here is our start signal wire this is what the ignition sends power to to energize the solenoid on the starter and, and turn the engine over. It's disconnected and we've got a separate red wire ran up through the machine somewhere. So I was thinking, well, maybe there's a rubbed or damaged wire or harness or something. So they so, had to bypass it. To so they had to bypass it just to get it to start. Somebody did that. So instead of tracing down the whole harness, what should we do next? Well, we can just go to the source and see you know it gets its the start signal comes from the controller so we can see if that's where they put it mm -hmm. but let's test the solenoid first because we know that wire works so whatever they bypassed they made it work but let's test this solenoid mm. first so how are we going to do that continuity check continuity check so what we did is we pulled our schematic and we found the pin wire and the wire number to where it goes to our controller. Because like we said, the controller handles that. So let's do a continuity test on that. What I'm gonna do is since we still have it back probed here, we're just gonna hook to it and we're gonna pop our panel out. And tell them about that connector real quick, Mike. So here's the connector. This is the, this is the controller on these ones, it's the panel. So you come back here and you can see all of the connectors. We went to our schematic, we got the pin out, and we found that, which one was it? Um, so J1B. J1B, that's right. So you can see, it'll tell you on the paper, the pin out, but you can also see, so this is J1 and it says right here, if you can see that, J1. And then if you look right here, you got your A, B, C, D, E. So J1B right here is the wire that goes to the start signal. So we can take- uh, That one actually, that goes to the- Oh, I'm uh, sorry, the- shut, um, uh, shut off solenoid. Shut off solenoid. So we're gonna check continuity in between here and there. And the beeping means we have continuity. So the wire's good, theoretically. Theoretically, right. And, Again, continuity test doesn't always tell you for sure that the circuit is good. We have to load test it. You, you could have one tiny strand of copper and you'll still have continuity, but you won't be able to run a load through that. Mm -hmm. So, And that's another reason why we back probe the circuits when we're testing for power and testing stuff like that. But what I also did, instead of back probing at the panel, we just put a, we got a, um, a load tester that we run through our meter and we went ahead and load tested that wire and it did check good. So if we've got a good wire from our panel all the way down there, good we know the, shil the solenoid is good. What could be the problem? You got an internal problem in your computer. And the reason we think it's the controller is because the wire that they run down to the starter, remember the controller should also tell the starter to engage, yep. but they bypassed it. They went straight to the ignition switch after we traced that red wire that went all the way back. So that tells us that the controller wasn't working. So we got two separate issues from the controller itself. Yeah, so the controller has two circuits yep. that apparently have now failed. Functioning. But it's a $1,500 yes. controller? Yes. So I think we've done our due diligence as far as testing the circuit and the wiring. 
only other option we can come up with is the panel itself yep. that's failed. It just so happens I have a test panel. Let's plug it up and see what happens. So all the, this panel looks really good. My test controller is a little rough, but I know it's a good controller because I've tested it. So we're just gonna use this to test with. So let's just get everything plugged in. And it's the same part number two. I mean, these have both keyless start and keyed start. This machine is a keyed start, so you have to have a key start panel in order to test this. Luckily, you had a keyed one. Yeah, and I understand not everyone's going to have a test panel, but we will replace the panel with a new one if this works. So when you put in a new panel, what has to happen? You got to program the hours and everything back in, so... And who can program it? We can. We can. That's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, based off serial number, we have to put the program in based on machine options and what have you. So, All right. So we got everything, you know, we got our jumper wire and everything disconnected. So let's go ahead and test it, see if it'll start and run. So it is running. Now we want to do one more test and you real see quick. It shut off with the key too. And it shut off with the key, yeah. So what I want to do is we still have this start circuit bypassed. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull their fuse out of their jumper wire. And I need to check for 12 volts on this wire when he goes to the start position. Okay, go ahead and try to start it. Okay, so we got 11 volts there. I don't know if you can see it on the meter, but that tells me that, yeah, our test panel actually fixed our issues on this machine. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and get a um, new panel ordered and installed, and that should take care of our issues. So if you have any questions on that, let us know. And again, this is not an electrical issue that can only be found on the Toolcat. Now this one has a Deuce, all right, I'm sorry, a Kubota motor. Kubota. Um, not the Doosan motor, but many of the skid steers and excavators have basically the same electrical type system, especially the excavators. I mean, the panels are almost identical. Yep. So, yep. The 237. Yeah. That, that's a pretty cool, um, well, electrical issue that we did a pretty straightforward troubleshooting on. So that's just basically how we go about troubleshooting the electrical issues on these machines. So thanks for watching. Let us know if you have any questions. Anything else, Mike? I was going to say, uh, Usually when you're troubleshooting, the computer is always the last thing to replace. It always is, the last Because thing. it's so expensive. Yep, and, and they're usually pretty sturdy. They, so they you, are. You they know. don't fail often. That, that's a really good point. So, and that's you, why. You got to do your due diligence before replacing a, compu yeah. a computer. A yeah. lot of people, a lot of parts changers like to throw computers at machines and then you're 10 grand in it. And, so. that, and that's not the issue. But based off the troubleshooting we did, Let's There's, just say we yeah. didn't have a test controller. Would you feel confident? I, I would feel confident replacing the controller. I yep. would too. So, yeah, awesome, man. Thanks for your help.